Hi, good afternoon. Welcome here to our studios. We are talking sports with Val. We are doing our 2023 fall previews, and we're going to talk some Winnemac Warriors. Val, how you doing? Doing great. Doing great. So uh, tomorrow is your three-year anniversary here at RTC. A lot of uh, a lot of changes over the last three years. Of course, you came in in the middle of a pandemic, so at least we don't have to wear the masks anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quite the interesting uh, yeah. time in our lives. Yeah, I've been joking. It was about a year and a half. I'd been here a year and a half, and I hadn't seen most of my coworkers' faces yet because we were all still wearing masks. Yeah, part of that might be the fact that you come in at 2 o'clock in the morning, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody else here, but, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I it like my, quite interesting. I like my privacy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just watch the alarm, right? Mm, right. <laughs> but, I mean, things have changed at Winnemac, I mean, a lot in the last three years as well when you mm. think about uh, a lot of new coaches have come in, uh, and the you know the Hoosier North Conference has changed a lot. Yeah, and it's going to change even more next year when Knox and Laville leave, mm -hmm. and you're adding in for football only or for football North Miami and South Central, and then Argus and OD as well. So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of a different landscape in the in the Hoosier North, and who will be the biggest school in the conference? Winnemac. starting? In, yeah, it's going to yeah. be Winnemac yeah. with an enrollment of, I think, like 385, yeah. you know, the 385 to 400 range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, you go from, obviously, LaVille's been up there in, in size, and, you know, Judson kind of fluctuates a little bit. They, I don't think they've ever been quite that big, but uh, Knox definitely has been the, uh, the dominant force mm -hmm. as far as uh, enrollment. So uh, a lot of changes going to be happening, and you're you know, you talk about North Miami, they're going to be uh, participating in all sports. Mm -hmm. uh, South Central is just going to be there for football, but then you also uh, add Argus and, uh, you know, Oregon Davis. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's a lot of intriguing things there, you know, with Argus and girls basketball. Uh, you know, I know yeah. girls basketball, Argus and Winnemac <laughs> have had some battles over the yeah. years. Uh, North Miami, same thing, you know, with, with – uh, yeah, basketball, I think so. Winnemac fans will miss Knox. I, I would imagine, right? Because um, they're uh, probably the closest, uh, not only fit size wise, right. but you know, rivalry wise. But having said that, geographically, this is a conference that will make sense for Winnemac. Yeah, I mean, with North Miami uh, coming in, and I think OD. Mm -hmm. I think Winnemac's always had kind of little rivalries with OD in, in yeah. sp certain sports. Yeah, and other they can go north and west for a for a game. Uh, and then uh, you know, our, and like we said, Argus. I mean, that's uh, a really interesting kind of game. They always seem to play close games against each other, regardless yeah. of sport, almost. Yeah. Regardless of sport, or you know how each team's doing, it's it's yeah. uh, you know I can remember going down there with some really good you know Argus teams and mm -hmm. having a battle. Yeah. You know. Uh, so the football team last year, you know, kind of a transition year, new coach. So. Um, you know, obviously, the year before you graduated, I think what twenty-two seniors, right? Uh, so it obviously, was, you right, it was around it was gonna, twenty, and yeah. we knew it, it was going to be a rebuilding year. And I, and they wound up winning two games, but I mean, I mean, there are there are four A, five A schools that graduate twenty, and that's 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 a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for for a school, Winnemac size, that's it was just a lot. And then on top of that, you know, Coach Burgess coming in and taking over for a legend and Coach John Hendricks, uh, it was a lot. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know now they've got a now they've got a lot more, you know they've got a lot back and they've got some veterans on that team and I'm curious to see if they take uh, take a step up this year. I think Coach Hendricks was my first Zoom interview I did. Mm -hmm. um, you know him getting that job back in 20. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, I remember that very well because yeah. I, I don't think I'd attempted a Zoom interview before that. So, mm -hmm. but you got a you know you got a returning quarterback. I mean that's kind of one of the all. Whenever I look at a high school football team, the first question I ask is, is their quarterback back from last year? And the answer is yes, Cash Roth is back. And he's a very athletic kid uh, who just needed he just needed to get some experience. He needed to get some time to throw. And I think a lot of the times he was just – he didn't have much time to throw and he was just under pressure a lot of the time. So we'll see how he does there. And, then, you know, Jaden Jones is going to be back. He's a veteran running back. You know, Jaden's really quick. Um, not the biggest kid, but he kind of hides behind his offensive lineman really well, and I'm I'm curious to see how he does there. Uh, but I think a lot of it is just developing the offensive and defensive lines. I, mm -hmm. I mean, they graduated five offensive linemen after the 2021 20, uh, season. 
And so it's just kind of getting that line to back back to where it was. Winnemac only has 33 kids out for football. That's pretty small by Winnemac standards. Usually they're in the 40s. Mm. Um, so you know we'll see uh, we'll see how they do with 33. Seems like every team we've talked about, you know, a little bit small for their you know expectations. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of a kind of a theme this year. But uh, you know when you talk about conference play with the Hoosier North this year, um, you know Pioneer, Caston, Winnemac. Culver, I mean, they're they're all in pretty similar situations. I, mm-hmm. I think, you know, Knox and, and Judson and Laville, obviously, and Triton are probably going to be your top half. But that bottom half, it's it's kind of up for grabs as to who does what where. Yeah, and um, you know, one thing about Winnemac's schedule is that their schedule always is really tough through about mid September, and then it gets a little bit easier as the season goes on but mm-hmm. boy this is a it's a tough schedule i mean because you got laville early you got north Judson early mm-hmm. so you got knox early so you got to be on your game early in the season mm-hmm. yeah so uh it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to right. see how but, they can develop some of these young players after a year right and those games will help you get ready for what's a pretty tough two-way sectional when you got Lafayette Central Catholic and Rochester, Lafayette Central Catholic is number four in the first coaches poll of the year. Yeah. Rochester's number eleven. Right. And then, you know, even some of those other programs like, you know, Seeger's getting Seeger's getting better. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know, Benton Central's getting better. Yeah, I think Seeger graduated a lot, if I remember right. I think so. I think Benton yeah. Central was young. Mm-hmm. So they, they should be uh yeah. pretty good this year. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it'll be that'll be interesting. Uh, and Lewis Cass is gonna be yeah. won't be easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just hoping that Winnemac maybe they can go to Seeger this year instead of Rochester. That <laughs> was a haul. But, uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how these young players develop here for the Warriors. Mm-hmm. So, um, volleyball team coming off of a 6-24 and season last year. First off, I just want to say, um, you know, Heather Caston, uh, I think she's beat the cancer, and I just – uh, you know, well, that's I, great. I, I love the the cast and family. Shay, you know, was part of our broadcasting crew, and, and Heather is just a a great woman, and, and we're just glad to see that she's healthy. Yeah, um, and you know, uh, asked her a few questions about the team, and you know, um, you know, she talked about Piper Link being a team leader, mm-hmm. and um, she's one of them. Uh, the others are um, Reagan Caston, who's a senior and is really kind of you know kind of solidifies that back row mm-hmm. and then Lindsay Walters she's going to be the setter on this team and then um, but they also have a bunch of newcomers when you talk about Maggie Keller Callie Caston um, you know they've really kind of stood out so far mm-hmm. uh, in practice um, I asked her what the biggest strengths are and she said is our buy-in everybody's in it, in it together in it for a common goal mm-hmm. team camaraderie has been great um, but um the concern, I guess, is the average height is five five. Because right. you lose Mackenzie Hines to graduation, right. and she's You're difficult to replace. Yeah. I mean, Mackenzie mm-hmm. Hines could dominate a match at times. Yeah. I mean, and she was that good. I mean, where yeah. you could even tell opponents would keep the ball away from Mackenzie Hines. Right. Right. And and she was going to be something they have to deal with. Um, it's interesting. She, you know, Heather, Coach Heather Caston said that it's unlikely they'll have a libero. Uh, only because it wouldn't benefit our rotation much. Each front row position has one player. Uh, that can and needs to play all the way around. Brooke Roush in the middle, Piper Link on the left, and Lindsay Walters on the right. Uh, Brooke led the team in passing during tryouts, and Lindsay is the setter uh, in that 5-1 that, that they're running. So uh, Allie Campbell, Piper Link, and Reagan Caston had equal passing stats, so getting them all on defense is going to be... So you don't... It wasn't like one libero was just dominating the ball. Mm-hmm. So uh, Reagan Caston would be the libero if they used one, is what she said. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, that's the issue. And the other issue is, of course, they're just a very tough sectional. I mean, my goodness, Pioneer and Wabash are just very, very good teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I think if you're a Winnemac fan, you're already saying, "Let's hope Pioneer and Wabash draw each other in the first match at sectional." Yeah, and they're but, yeah. maybe on the other side of the bracket as well. Right, you right. Know. So, but again, uh, yeah, I mean, again, she's talked about communication and court awareness. Um, lots of people playing all the way around, some in new positions due to a small roster. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know they've got, they've got that home tournament right off the bat, which is some, there's some winnable matches in that home tournament tomorrow. 
Mm-hmm. And that's going to be, if they can build up some confidence, that'll be good because then they go, the following Saturday, they go to North Miami for the Tomahawk invite. That'll be a, t- a tougher test. Right. How about the uh, soccer team? I know they had a, a bit of a struggle last year, only winning three games, but. Uh... Yeah, uh, don't know a whole lot about Winamax soccer. I know that they won only three games last year, and they only have 12 on the roster that I received. Okay. And that's another one too. You know, we talked yeah. about the the Hoosier North changes coming up next year, and and you know with Argus coming yeah. in, so that's gonna obviously if and North Miami as well. We talked about right. them. You know, they're they're a decent uh, soccer program. Right. Chad Burton is a you know veteran coach. Um, it's, this is a co-ed team. Um, they've got twelve, but he's not gonna have a whole lot of flexibility with his roster if he can't make many subs. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, again, you'd like to get those numbers up, especially once you know Argus joins the conference. In 2024, and especially North North Miami as well, mm-hmm. yep. and Winamax in a uh, sectional with, sectional with both of those. Yeah, yep. Uh, girls golf. I mean, they just kind of have a tradition of uh, doing some pretty good stuff there in that uh, girls golf program. Boy, Bianca Huizar has turned into a star. I hope I hope I'm pronouncing Bianca Huizar. I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. Bianca was a regional qualifier last year, and so far this year, she's only broken the school record twice and. Two tournaments. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad start. She shot seventy-eight, uh, and then uh, in the at the Rensselaer invite, and then followed it up at the Kankakee Valley invite, and shot seventy-seven at Sandy Pines. Yeah, that's a tough course. That's a tough course. Yeah. She shot seventy-seven. So, yeah. and you know, I talked with Coach Jeremy Shell. Coach Jeremy, we should mention Jeremy Shell's the coach now. Uh, Scott Rodebush is had coached the girls last year. And now he's retired, so Jeremy Shell's coaching both the girls and the boys' golf teams. At oh, he's, he's coaching the boys, coaching too? Coaching both. Okay. Uh, so he, last spring was his first year coaching the boys. This uh, fall is his first year coaching the girls. And I, was at, I asked him about Bianca. He goes, Bianca's a fantastic golfer and an even better person. She has a very balanced game and really doesn't seem to get rattled by much. And then uh, um, he, he goes, even before I coached her, I would always see her out in the course working hard, working hard on her game. I don't think you will find many, very many high school athletes that will work harder than her. So that's quite a compliment. Mm-hmm. Um, and numbers wise, they're good. I mean, they got nine. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we're talking about a lot of wow, schools yeah. in the area who struggle to get. You know, they're playing with four, and right. don't they don't have, have drop it, there's, no, there's no buffer zone. Yeah, they've got nine, but the only problem is that uh, they don't have a freshman. Hmm. So, and they only have one sophomore. They got four seniors, four juniors, and one sophomore. So, hmm. it's. Um, uh, you know, Coach Rodebush, he said that Coach Rodebush and he ran some camps this summer hoping to get some underclassmen to come out. Uh, and he says he's he's still willing to take any late ads if they want to come in because mm-hmm. uh, they want to build up those numbers. Uh, Mershai Lamer is the newcomer. Um, she's the sophomore, but uh, she's actually a, a volleyball player, but she suffered an injury, so she can't play volleyball, so she's going out for the golf team. Oh, okay. Still able to, still able to play golf. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, and you talked about Bianca Huizar and Olivia. Olivia Link Piper plays volleyball. Olivia plays golf, and she is uh, one of the one of the leaders. And one of the other seniors is Maggie Smith. How many people do you know play golf and run cross country? Well, now you know one. Maggie, one. Maggie Smith. <laughs> one, yeah. Hmm. So, wow. But again, Winnemac. I think you know. I think there's a good chance they'll be favored once they get to that uh, Hoosier North tournament at Round Barn. In uh, I think it's September 16th. Twenty yeah. third, yeah. Okay. So you talk yeah. about Maggie or Smith, September, and... yeah, September. I think it might be September 9th. but then, then Winamax in that tough Twin Lakes sectional with Rochester, Logansport, Twin Lakes, yeah, Kankakee, yeah, Logansport, Kankakee, another, Kankakee Valley, yeah, yeah, Logansport looking to have another good year yeah. as well. It sounds yeah. like. Um, you talked about uh, Maggie Smith running cross country. How about the cross country team? Yeah, we need to talk about this cross country team because this is one of those teams where you look at them and you go. Boy, that looks like a semi-state team, and then you go, um, "There's no semi-state anymore," mm. because this is this is going to be a very good girls. The girls' cross-country team is just outstanding at Winnemac, and uh, you know, again, the problem is is that they, well, let's start with the good things first. We're talking about any problems they might have. They've got six of their top seven runners back from last year. When you talk about Maggie Smith, when you talk about Cadence Hoover, when you talk about Candace Croft, when you talk about Kelsey Wegner, when you talk about the younger sister, Avery Wegner, and you got Claire Goodman. So this is a team, they got six of their top seven back, and I think there's going to be, you get uh, Bethany Poor. I mean, she's run varsity before. She didn't make last year's sexual team, because they were so deep. So 
they're going to have some good competition for that seventh spot in the postseason. Um, but, you know, now Winnemac is moving from the Logansport sectional to the Rensselaer sectional. Hmm. Can they win the Rensselaer sectional? Uh, they're going to be very competitive at it. But you've got Kankakee Valley in there. We'll see how they do. But, I mean, they're going to be right there. Mm-hmm. And then that, that'll take them to the New Prairie Regional. And who's at the New Prairie Regional? Well, all the region teams. Mm-hmm. So it's just, oh, you just feel like, boy, if they had just... I don't think the... I, I, no, I haven't talked to Coach Adam Bennett. I just think... I don't think the format change did them any favors. I think... But you can say that. I'm sure a lot of small schools are feeling that way. But, right. boy, the, oh... You just wish they had that old, the, the 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 old format because I think as a team wise they would under the old format they, as a team wise they probably would have been almost a lock for semi state. Mm-hmm. But like I said, there's no more semi state. Yeah. Well, we'll see what they can do, and that's you know. Yeah, and this is a, it, you talk about a pack running team. The Winnemac girls are that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got just a bunch of they got six girls who can run under twenty two. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. just great for a school their size. Well, I, I remember those girls running uh, yeah. last spring on the track. Yeah. So yeah, it's a they it's got a, a great group. they got a great feeder system. Jenny Belcher, somebody we know very well. She yeah. coaches varsity softball. She also coaches middle school cross country. Does she? And okay. she and she's they always bring. There's always that you know kids graduate, but then there's always a new group that comes in. Yeah. Well, you talk about all the coaching changes that Winnemac has been through. That's one that they haven't changed since yeah. Coach Belcher, and she's yeah. been there a long time. Right. Yeah. And of course, Adam Bennett, he's been there a long time coaching cross country. Yeah. Boy side, you know, they graduated just a great kid in Colby Wagner. Yeah. I mean, he is hard to replace. He, <laughs> he's, he did a great job. Uh, that, probably the top returnee on this team is Logan Friedel. Uh, Logan's a sophomore, but he, he's run in the low 18s before. So he's run under 18.30. Can he get under 18.15, 18? Can he even get under 18 minutes? We'll see there. Um, the other, Some of the other kids are Nathan Pierce-Chalski and Corbin Holohan. Those are some of the other top runners on this boys team. But again, going from the Logan Sports sectional to the Rensselaer sectional, it's going to be a challenge, mm-hmm. um, especially under the new format. Because again, once you get to the regional, you got all those region studs, you got all the kids from the Doonland Conference. Yeah, I always watched, uh, liked watching Colby run. I mean, you could just tell that he was he was putting everything that he had into it. Yeah, and uh, you know, he was he was a good one. Mm-hmm. So, all right, any other uh, notes on Winnipeg? Did I miss anything? Uh, yeah, just looking at to getting getting out to Winnemac some more this year, but um, uh, good, uh, definitely that girls cross country team I'm gonna have my eye on. Yeah, uh, it's it's a really talented group. I hope you get out and watch some races because they're they're worth they're worth it. Yeah, we've uh, we've worked with uh, uh, Brian Leverance there, the athletic director, and you know with their huddle system and and the the blue frame system and the IHSA website. So. A lot of the the volleyball, you know, JV volleyball, varsity volleyball, JV football, varsity football, all that stuff is is already up on the website. If you go to our website, uh, rtc4.com, or if you go to the ihsatv.org website, you can also find it there. But uh, all that stuff will be yeah. uh, broadcast on there. So there's a lot of Winnemac uh, available for you, and it's all free to view. So. Right. I mean, you know, again, I, I always think about uh, – you know, so many coaches at Winnemac are either Winnemac grads or they've just been at Winnemac for a long time. So I mm-hmm. think there's just a lot of pride throughout that school system. Yep. Looking forward to a good yeah, fall the, here. Athletics, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to a good fall for some uh, Winnemac Warriors athletics. So, all right, thanks for tuning in to the uh, Winnemac Warriors 23 fall sports preview and uh, appreciate it. Thank you.